Hello and welcome to Ditching Hourly. I'm Jonathan Stark. Today I've got an audio excerpt from an answer I provided on my YouTube channel. You can check it out at thejonathanstarkshow.com and it'll redirect you to YouTube if you're into watching videos. Otherwise, you can just listen to the audio here on the podcast. Enjoy. Hey, Jonathan here. We've got a question from Nikki Cross who asks, I'd love to hear a more detailed video about outcome selling versus things I'm going to do to get the outcome. I didn't realize I struggled with this until I watched the video. So there's a comment on one of my previous videos. Okay. So the tendency, especially for someone who's a freelancer and sort of in this technician mindset, like I'm great at writing copy. I'm great at building websites. I'm great at uh, writing, I don't know, Swift code or JavaScript. Um, there's a tendency to overemphasize the importance of the activities of your craft versus why the customer wants it in the first place. So no customer will ever come to a front end developer and say, we need 20,000 lines of JavaScript by next month. Nobody wants the code. Nobody wants the copy. Nobody wants the mockups. They want an outcome. So a business person is looking for business outcomes. So if someone comes to you ready to write a check or like, potentially going to write a check, they're going to want a return on that investment. And those returns are going to be measured in business outcomes, in business ways. Even if they're intangible, they might be um, very tangible bottom line. You know, you're going to fix their sales funnel and all of a sudden their sales are going to double, but they could be farther upstream. They could be things where your, your business outcome that you deliver is something they believe will contribute to an improvement that they're trying to make in their business. It could be an improvement, you know, way downstream of increased sales. It could be that they want to have a bigger impact with the business. It's a mission driven business and they think, it, think it's really important to expand into a new market and you're going to help them do that. And you know, there are going to be things that you can measure about your contribution that is moving the needle for them in their big picture objective. So in other words, if, even if you're not increasing sales by a hundred thousand dollars. Therefore I can charge you 10,000. Um, the, any project is worth something to the client. There's some dollar amount that is the maximum they would pay to achieve the outcome of the project. Okay. So when you go to the, uh, the sales interview, or when you have a sales interview over the phone and you ask the questions from the why conversation, what you're doing is you're trying to get past all of the activities that you think they want you to do, or they think they want you to do. We want you to write this much code. We want you to write these many headlines. We want you to put together these marketing pieces and, you know, send them out in direct mail. They're probably going to start by talking about deliverables and tasks and things that they think they want you to do. And that's fine. You can write all that down. It can be helpful. But after that, you want to back up and then start asking the why questions. Why not not do this? Like this is going to be risky. This is going to be expensive. Why not just leave things the way they are? What's the transformation that you're trying to make here? So you're, they're in a current state, which they probably thoroughly described to you by the, you know, 10, 15 minutes into the phone call. And then you need to get a clear picture of the desired future state. So, so dear client, I understand where your business is at right now. You've told me you want to do all of these things that I do, and I'm happy to do them, but I don't know, but like, where are you trying to go though? You know, like, what is it that you're trying to achieve from this investment that you might be making with me in copy or code or photos or whatever? If they can't answer that, then there's nothing, there's no moving forward. There's no, if they don't know what they want to get out of it from a business standpoint, um, then there's nothing to price. If you're going to do a value price, there's no way to do it. Cause there's no value. Like you don't know what the value is, but usually if you're talking to the right person and not a gatekeeper, usually you can find out what they're trying to achieve. You know, at the, you know, at, let's say I, I finished this project with you. We've finished this project and it's delivered a year later. What's your dream? Like, what's your home run? What does that look like? What would be your dream situation? And if they can't answer that, you can sometimes go negative and say like, well, what would be a disaster? If at the end of this project, what would be, a, what would be a disastrous thing to have happen or a disastrous thing for me to deliver? What would be the worst possible thing? And you can usually reverse engineer what the best possible thing is from that. It depends on the kind of their worldview. Okay. So by the end of this phone call, if you've determined that there is a good fit between the two businesses and you should move forward with a proposal, then you can, um, you, you're going to include a lot of information from the entire conversation, uh, because the, the proposal is basically a, a summation of what, of the conversation. It's not salesy. You're not trying to convince them of anything. You just, in the proposal, you're like, here's where you are, here's where you want to go. And here's what we believe my contribution could be to that transformation. It's like pretty straightforward. 
and then you give them three options. And the three options are going to include some of the things that they mentioned because you believe that they would, that, that they're smart, you know? So in other words, the, the client kind of self-diagnosed and pre prescribed their own medicine and you agree you're the doctor and you're like, yeah, it probably would be smart for them to take Motrin in this case. So you, I, I would put in uh, some of the deliverables or features or some of the things that I'm going to do into the proposals. So option one, I will write all this copy. I will deliver these interface, whatever, whatever the things are. And then uh, additionally, and this is where, and most people do this already. They say, I'm here are all the things I'm going to do. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have tons of them. I'm talking like three to six bullet points of like, here's some things I'm going to do or deliverables that I'm going to do or deliver or some features that will be added to the software. But then you have another section, which is even more important right after that in the benefits of these features will be, and you tie them back to business benefits that someone who wasn't even in the room doesn't know about your craft at all. Doesn't know what the whole point of this project is. They're going to look at those benefits and they're going to be like, Oh, those would be good things to have. So it'd be things like, it could be something real intangible, like increased morale, or it could be, um, uh, better reputation in the marketplace, or it could be something like, uh, increased leads this, you know, having this new interface is going to increase the number of leads coming in through your website or whatever the business outcome is of these things you're going to do. Uh, you, it's really important to put those in there because those are the things that they're going to compare the price to the stuff you're going to do to get them to the increased leads or the increased reputation or the improved reputation. They're interested to have that in the proposal because they want to know that the information that they communicated to you was received and now you're echoing it back to them and they can be like, Oh, okay, he or she heard us. She or he or she understands our situation and we agree that these tasks or these deliverables or these features probably need to be there. Probably going to have to have that gives them a picture of what the engagement will look like, but it's not the primary focus. The primary focus is the business benefits under option one and, and subsequently under options two and three so that the, the person who receives the proposal could take it to the CFO or their spouse or somebody who was not in the meeting, doesn't know what's going on. And they could say, well, do these prices make sense to you. And they would look, the thing they're going to look at is not that you're going to do 10,000 lines of code or that you're going to create X number of screens. What they're going to look at is, is the benefits of option one, the benefits of option two and the benefits of option three. And they're going to say, well, is it worth, you know, the difference in price between options one and option two is $5,000. Like are the benefits of option two worth that Delta? And they'll be able to answer that question. So, um, so to summarize, you do have to put some of the stuff you're going to do the sort of labor part into the proposal because you talked about it and you want to communicate back to them that the message is received. You're a good communicator. You understand their situation, but what they really care about and what's much more important is adding the benefits. So the, the, the outcome. So the outcome of option one in business terms will be, you know, these three things and same for the other options. Okay. Hopefully that helps. I'm Jonathan Stark. If you have a question for me, you can hashtag ask Jonathan on LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube, and we'll add it to the queue. See ya. Would you like to learn how to get paid what you're worth? How about selling your expertise and not your labor? We work through all of this together in the pricing seminar. Pre-registration starts soon and you can sign up to be among the first to know when early bird pricing is announced at thepricingseminar.com. That URL again is thepricingseminar.com. Hope to see you there.